Hey, Dahendo here at the Mystical Yoga Farm. I'm gonna give you a little permaculture tour around our farm. Um, so the Mystical Yoga Farm, we're here in Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. We are a transformational retreat center, a permaculture community, and a living, breathing example of sustainability as well as a conscious business. So I'm going to show you around and show you some of the systems that we've implemented here. So what we do for permaculture, we got the lake right here. You can see the volcano is behind the clouds. Over here we've got Grandfather Rock, the guardian of this land. So I just want to point out real quick, do you see the lake is all the way over there? But we've created this wall a while ago before the lake rose that has actually helped us to reclaim this land. So all this land, you can't really see it. There's lots of palms here. So these palms are all leftover palms. We just switched out our three main palm roofs that were leaking and we completely redid them. We're looking at ways to reuse them. These are ones that are mostly unreusable. So we're gonna burn a lot of them to create some biochar and some ash. And we are currently in the process of regenerating this whole section. It used to be water last year and now we're reclaiming it as land. Here we have our old boat that we're going to be transforming into a house at a later time. You can see we've already been planting bananas and squash in this section. Over here you see a pile of two and a half year old humanure that came from our other property that we're going to be spreading throughout our gardens to regenerate that. You see, we've got our new grassy patch. It's a little overgrown right now, but it's a, the shape of a sun, and it's where we spin fire, as well as sunbathe and do yoga, have picnics, stuff like that. We have our little day lounge over there, and the roof is actually made out of this local grass that comes from the mountain. So let's keep walking by. You see this archway that has lacuna and passion flower growing up it. We made it with a lot of sticks that come from the farm and our upper property and they're all bent and screwed in and it's going to be a little gazebo style archway. You see this macuna, it's an amazing nitrogen fixer as well as they call it the dopa bean. It's really good for mood enhancement. We've got some bamboo, we've got some little flowers of course everywhere. Here's an amazing little moringa tree that we recently planted. We've got this, some wild daga, we've got raspberry bushes growing everywhere. See this squash right here? It's actually perennialized, so we watered it through the dry season, and then it, and once the rainy season hit, it really popped off, and it's kind of overgrowing things. We need to push it back a little bit and contain it a little more. So here you see our two boathouses. We've got the Shakti ship and the Shiva Sham boat, and it's used. It's the roof was built with the old palms from our water shala as well as our two other buildings that recently got rebuilt and we reused about half or a little more of the palms to add to some of our other roofs give it a little more natural look we've got some white sage right over here that we use for smudging this rue right here is also a really good cleansing herb so let's walk down we've got some tobacco right here. Let's actually just step over here in some of these gardens. More squash, some vines growing up back there. We've got some root vegetables, turmeric, carrot. Over here we've got some kale. All of these big leaves right here are yucca growing under the ground as well as we've got some papayas and sweet potatoes growing in here as well as takiske. So we call this garden the fruit root garden. We've got the fruits for the papaya and then root vegetables. Over here, we've got a little walkway to access some of our raspberries. Yum, yum, yum. We've got these palms everywhere. We actually just finished this project called the water shallow. Before we enter, I'm gonna show you these stairs. So a lot of what we do here is reusing things that break. So I use these old broken singing bowls as well as broken cup. And 
use the selenite. So as you walk up here, you're kind of cleansed a bit. So this is our newly improved water shallot. We recently had the center post taken out and it's built all with palms. They come from about two and a half hours out by the coast and all of the sticks actually come from the mountains nearby. So it's super local and we're super excited. And without the center post, it's actually about doubled in size. You can see they changed out a lot of the sticks and the logs here. They piled them right here. So we have a nice little pile. We're going to be reusing all of this. We reuse it for um, shelves, building projects, and then that which is a little too lost to be reused, we use for the firewood of our tamascal, which is a Mayan sauna. So we've got gardens on every side of the path. The way that we do it, because we're also, you know, host yoga retreats and teacher trainings and things like that, how we've kind of set it up is that along the borders, we put ornamentals like the ferns and flowers, and then inside of the borders, we put more usable things. We have our new fence that we created here kind of as a safety measure to uh, keep away dogs from our gardens as well as to create a little bit more of a safe and protected feeling. Again, all of these sticks come right from the land. We prune our fruit trees like we pruned our lime tree as well as this uh, the guanabana tree as well as this guava and we use all of it to create a fence and we have some passion flower about to grow up it as well as some baby cucumbers that are gonna be growing up the wall. So we keep walking here. Here's our gray water system. It definitely needs a little bit of love, but all of the water that comes from our kitchen sinks uh, comes down here and feeds this banana tree. It actually goes through a series of little filters and then it ends up in a little pool. And we also put our clippings back there as well to decompose and feed these bananas. We got some basil growing in here. This one's a really amazing one. I'll show it again as we go. We call it cucamelon. We don't really know what it's called. We were gifted it by a, a local permaculture farm called Atitlan Organics. We have this acerola cherry here or this Barbados cherry. We planted some of the sticks. We recently pruned it and transplanted it. So it's on its way towards full health. We've got this tropical lettuce that our dear brother Alan brought straight from Costa Rica. And behind that, we have some arugula that's going to seed. So a big thing that we do here is that we let at least one or two of everything that we plant go back to seed so that we can gather our own seeds so that we can create a closed loop cycle to where we're not dependent on the outside world that we can actually provide our own food. And currently we're about 20% farm to table and with the development of our upper property into a food forest and really focusing a lot on the gardens, we're looking to get that up to 50% by the end of the year or early next year. So part of that is gathering our own seeds. So we're gathering arugula seeds. Let's walk down here. We've got this lemon bergamot right here. And back there, we've got some more yucca and mulberry, celery and lettuce over there. And you can see a lot of our gardens are overgrown. It's the rainy th season. Things grow really fast. We don't have as many volunteers as we usually do because of this pandemic. So we're doing the best that we can to keep our gardens really flourishing. Let's walk down here and we'll see our guava tree. You can just pick a fruit. Got this yummy pink stuff. Right here we have some hakote trees. We pruned up a hakote at our upper property and we're going to be planting these sticks at our second property as well as around here. Create some more fruits. You can see these fruits are literally just falling on the floor. Mm, yum. That one's a good one. So underneath here we have all sweet potatoes growing because they can grow in the shade. They actually kind of run along and find little patches of sun and it's growing underneath one of our six lime trees. So we don't really buy limes, we use all of our own limes here. So on this side of the path, you know, of course we got the ferns as ornamental. And I wanna point out this right here. So everything that you see right here besides this mandarin tree, it 
is volunteers. And a volunteer means that it's something that grows where you don't necessarily want it to plant. So we didn't plant any of this stuff here. It just came up on its own. And look, this is lettuce. This is an edible weed. A weed, by definition, is a plant that grows where you don't want it to. So I'm just going to eat this weed. It's actually lettuce. And this is a really good landmark, a really good showing that we are regenerating this land because at this point about 50% of our weeds are actually edible. So we'll find lettuce growing up in random places, we'll find arugula in random places, squash growing everywhere. So how amazing is it that a lot of our weeds are edible? Here we got some chocolate mint we use for tea. So we have an entire tea wall I'm going to show you and about 80% of the teas on our wall actually come from the farm that we dehydrate ourselves. So we got this chocolate mint, another lime tree, some squash and mulberry growing in here, some garlic hidden in there. Here's our dry rack uh, where we dry our clothes. We hand wash them uh, with the help of our local Mayan ladies. We got one of our many compost toilets that you see here. Here you see a guanabana tree. We just recently pruned it quite a lot because it hasn't been fruiting, so we tried to give it a little extra boost. And this guanabana tree was actually planted by Stephen Brooks himself, the legend of Costa Rica. So here we have yarrow. Yarrow's a really fun one. I like to call it nature's stitches. You can actually, um, if you get a cut, you can wrap it around with a cloth, and as it dries, it will actually push your skin back together, kind of like stitches. So here we have our zone one garden. We got some Tulsi or holy basil right here, good for mental clarity. We've got this go-to cola right here that we use for increased blood flow and brain function. We use it as a tea. We've got lemongrass really growing everywhere. We have so much of it. Another mulberry tree. So all the mulberry trees that you see here, we plant from sticks. It's one of the many ways that you can propagate things. So in pruning our trees, a lot of them we can actually just stick the cuttings into the ground and they'll grow back. And this we planted maybe less than a year ago and it's already quite big and we're hoping that it fruits in the next couple months. And here we've got our strawberry patch and you'll see this little wall. All of this wall was used with reused bamboo from a festival build that we did nearby called Cosmic Convergence. We bring all of our building materials back and reuse them here at the farm. So let's just walk this way. Not gonna go too deep into this, but this is our Mayan Tamascal or our sauna where we have purification ceremonies and we use a lot of our wood. We get our wood from here. This is a eucalyptus tree that we recently pruned in the creation of our new palm roofs. You see, we've got this gong. So this is what notifies us that meals are ready. We've got one of our lovely local staff ladies right here, Rafina. Hola, Rafina. Hola. Um, so this is our rancho. This is our zone zero, the heart of our community, where we all gather at least a couple times a day to eat our delicious plant-based meals. You can see this squash actually came from the farm and we save the seeds. So again, we're saving the seeds. We're gonna roast some of them and then plant some of them and we give a lot away to the local Mayan community as well. So let's just step inside the rancho real quick. We've got an amazing apothecary right over here where we've got tinctures galore. We've literally got so many tinctures and we've even got some behind the scenes and some oils and compresses and about 75% of the tinctures that we're making come directly from plants that we have here. We have an amazing plant library. This is where we get um, our drinking water. It's filled with the um, Japanese water blessing. Here's the tea wall that I was telling you about. So each one is labeled and we actually have this little key that farm herbs have this little pink one locally sourced from Guatemala, has red imported has this one and then blends have that. So about 80% of these all came from the farm. And one of our 
the many things that we love here is tea. So we always have an infinite amount of tea and a lot of it comes from the farm. We're actually growing some Camellia sinensis trees as well to eventually have our own green and black tea one day. So here we have a big tomato plant and this one is one of my favorite fruits here. It's not ready so I'm not going to eat it but it's called a cherry guava. It's amazing. It's like a, if a cherry and a guava made sweet love and had this tree for our delicious mouths. So here's our hand washing station where we wash our hands obviously that's why it's called the hand washing station and it recently got rebuilt with some new palms as well behind it are our solar thermal showers and i'll be showing you how we heat our water as we move up so let's just keep walking up we see over here we have this big mint bush it's also creating the little archway right over there to two of our compost toilets and this mint it literally Mmm, smells like Christmas. We dehydrate it, grind it up, and mix it with chocolates, and it will literally taste like a York freaking chocolate. It's amazing. So this we call our three sisters garden. We have corn, beans growing up the corn, and then as you can see, squash kind of growing around it. So needs a little bit of love like all of our gardens. Um, but this is a technique called companion planting. So essentially the corn grows up, and it doesn't make that much shade. And then the beans grow up the corn, so we don't need to have the beans growing up any kind of sticks. They just grow up the corn. And then the squash grows in between. And they actually create a harmonious relationship. It's like your three best friends. You and your two best friends, and you all add something unique and different to the group. And that's what the three sisters are. And there's many other ways that we incorporate the companion planting into a lot of what we do. So over here, you see a big mess. Literally just a couple days ago, it was stacked this high with the old palms from our other roofs. And we just moved them all, some to our upper property. On our upper property, we're actually going to be creating a hut very soon where we're going to be gathering rainwater so that we can water it during the dry season. Over there you see our dehydration station where we currently dehydrate our herbs, but we're actually going to be making a big section of this, maybe 30 to 50% of it, a big solar dehydration room because we have so many herbs here and we like to dehydrate them all. So I'm just gonna take you inside our plant portal. This is my personal favorite bathroom. It's painted with some volcanoes. You see the sunrise, the plants have eyes. And how this works is that you remove this wood block, you make your sacred deposit in there. Afterwards, you add some sawdust. And then you put the top back on and then you go wash your hands. And where the compost or where the humanure goes is right here. So this is all freshly reused. And then we have also this, which is about a year old. It's not quite ready to go in our gardens yet. We're storing it right there until it decomposes a little bit more. Here you see another lime tree. We've got squash growing all in there. This right here, it may seem like a weed, but we're using it as a cover crop it's actually mugwort. Mmm, good for dreams. Opening the third eye, intuition, lots of good stuff. We have more mugwort than we know what to do with. It's one of those weeds that we have just growing everywhere that's actually usable. So this is one that I pointed out earlier. It's called wild daga or lion's tail because it kind of looks like a lion's tail a little bit. And this is like a super sedative. We dehydrate this. You put like three of these flowers inside of a little smoke or inside of your tea and it will just knock you out. It has a similar effects to Kratom. So here you see that big thing that says solar energy. That's where we get our hot water for our showers. So how it works is that our cold water or regular temperature water comes into the bottom of those tubes. The sun hits those tubes and heats the water. As the water heats up, thanks to our beloved science, the water, the hot water rises up into the tank and then it goes into our showers. And we have, with that tank full on a full sunny day, we have about 
60 minutes worth of hot water. So that's super exciting. I'm going to show you over here another way that we reuse bamboo. So this bamboo wasn't quite building material. So we cut some holes in it, made some little succulents, added some art. So you'll notice as we move around, one of our big things that we really love here is art as well. So we paint, we also make crafts out of reused things. So art is one of our biggest passions here. And it's one of our goals is to inspire the creative life force in all beings. So we're always looking for artists in residency. You see, this is a work in progress. We're gonna add some Shapibos. It's the Peruvian medicine wheel. More art here. As you can see, this little eagle head. Let's go down the path a little bit. Here you see our fire circle where we have fire ceremonies. And there's actually some rocks carved out into some spirit animals here. So this is my personal favorite spot. It's a great place to pray. So let's walk down here and see some of the art on this. So this used to be a dorm, but what happened is we kept getting problems with bed bugs. They kept coming back. We tried all of the solutions and it wouldn't work. So we stopped making it a dorm and we actually are moving towards now one of our greatest passions, which is art. So we're transforming it into a creation station. Let's take a look. It's a wood shop and a creation station. So we have power tools in here as well as this flex shaft. It's similar to a Dremel where we make art and carvings. I'll show you one little art project I've been working on. It's the poking stick for the fire. I got these jaws in Oregon from a deceased coyote. Put some crystals in there, some wings, all that good stuff. And here's just a little taste of some of the art that we've all been working on here in this quarantine. So we're gonna wait until the rain settles down a little bit and then put them all across our farm. Here you see this amazing map that was just recently made that has all of our sacred spaces. It includes the solar and it also has all of our fruit trees and we're gonna go through with a pencil and write every plant that's in each garden so that anybody who's looking to harvest something can harvest something. And we're also going to have a little section like what's in season or keep an eye on so that our fruits and vegetables don't get um, forgotten about. So you can see more art here. Here's all of our wood to be used as signs. So all of these signs were actually made out of reused wood. Wood from our old docks or wood from old structures. You know, we got the permaculture, peace, love, unity, respect, and permaculture. So that's real fun. Let's take a walk outside. And then upstairs, one thing I forgot to mention, upstairs is where we store all of our paints and our crafts, like strings and different things like this. So let's take a look here. This is actually, I'm so excited to show you about. First, I'll just point out these gardens. I got some echinacea here, lemon bergamot, garlic, turmeric right over there, ginger back in there, hibiscus right here, oregano right here, culinary sage right here. We love herbs so much here. Potatoes, basil, holy basil. Got these beans creating a little walkway. And this is what I'm so excited to show you about. So this is our new resource center or our new recycling center. And as you can see, we've used eco bricks and ceramics as well as glass. So this is our journey to zero waste. There is currently no recycling system or even trash system here where we live in Guatemala. So the only thing that the locals and we could do in the past really is what they do with the trash is they throw it off the side of the mountain. So I cannot stand the thought or the idea of our trash and our waste being on the side of the mountain. So we've actually over the years been creating these eco bricks. I'll find a better one right here. So what we do is we stuff soft plastic inside this hard plastic and it becomes hard like a brick. This is so hard I could bash it over my own head and knock myself out. That's how hard <laughs> it is. So what we did with these eco bricks, 
they weren't really properly done well because uh, the people, the vol we have a rotating crew of nomadic volunteers and they don't always know the proper way to make eco bricks. But I didn't want to just throw them away. We had to use them. So I actually made them into this art. So you can see it's actually a tree. So you have the branch right here out of these broken ceramics, the eco brick. We call it the MIP tree. So MOOP st stands for matter out of place. It means anything that is in a place that is not where it belongs and it's also kind of almost synonymous with trash and MIP, matter in place. It's the evolved form of MOOP. So what we did, we call this the MIP tree. All of this trash, quote unquote, has now been used in this beautiful art. Let's step over here. I've used 10 years worth of bottle caps and other things. These are all wine bottles. We don't drink wine here, but we get our honey in wine bottles from a local producer. Um, and it says reduce, reuse, recycle. Got glass bottles, little old tincture bottles that are not reusable. So this is from our old water container. So we are trying to reuse everything. And we actually, in the process of building this wall, used 10 years worth of broken glass. We also, back in there, in the floor, we dug it out a little bit and put a few of eco bricks that were completely unusable, the rest of our broken glass, and some like old rusty nails and things like that. Put a layer of concrete, put the layer of the trash, and then put another layer of concrete. So it's almost like a trash fossil, and we did that because I just, again, do not want to throw anything off of the side of the mountain because we are regenerating the earth, not polluting it. And that's the new paradigm. We're reusing all of our waste and transforming it into a resource. And that's why it's called the Resource Center. So let's just move along. See the permaculture zone. It's quite overgrown. I haven't had as much time to give it as much love. A lot of my work has shifted into the online world so that we can fund and support our local staff to gather donations and things like that. So if you're looking, if you're stoked at supporting our project and supporting our local indigenous staff of 10 workers and their family members, definitely donate. And so here is where all of our babies come. You can see we're reusing a lot. So this was an old little trash can that we've got celery growing in it now. Look, we've got this old uh, Bob Mills organic rolled oats that we've turned into a planter. Got old bins, old wood, old everything. We, everything in here is reused and built to create planters. We've got the rest of our wall. I really love incorporating trash into art. So these are like all of our bottles. We got like cologne bottles. I don't know who wears cologne here. It was actually at the bottom of our 10 year glass barrel. So here we have our compost system so our food compost goes from here we cover it with sawdust or broken leaves a few times like every two weeks or once a month we take it all out stir it all around and then put it into the second one and then we start filling this with fresh once this fresh one's full, this one's already full, we take it out, stir it around, mix it in the third, put it in the third one, and then we put fresh stuff back in the first one. And then under these moopy roofing panels, you see we have our soil sifters, so the compost. Then when it's ready, after that point, it will already have been here, been decomposing for about a year. We take it directly out, sift it, and then move that soil to our garden. The soil here is already really good because we're at the base of a mountain. So a lot of the runoff and nutrients come down and we collect them in our gardens. Plus we have tons of compost, plus we have tons of humaner. So the way it is right now is we have so much good soil that we don't even really know what to do with it all, which is an amazing place to be. We got in these gardens, we got some mustard, dragon fruit over there you see the mulberry so that's our original mulberry where all of our other mulberries as we prune this mulberry we plant a bunch of other ones so we have basil holy basil lettuce celery kale 
and all of these mustards you see that they're just kind of growing wild we didn't plant them they just went to seed a big mustard one mustard plant went to seed we didn't do anything with it and the rain and the wind just knocked all the seeds off and so now we can go in and instead of actually planting each seed all we do is we prune these up take some out and then move it to a new garden with spread out so this garden we have some chamomile right here some more basil back there we have dill back there we have more kale so walking on up we see this one this is so pretty it's called amaranth you can make gluten-free flour with it as well as when the leaves are a little smaller and the plants a little smaller and eat the leaves in salads and this is one of our many uh <laughs> volunteers that we have here it grows everywhere like a weed but it's edible so i'm going to take you just real quick inside one of our sacred spaces the own dome so this is our sound healing dome you can hear just by the way that my voice has changed that the acoustics are crazy in here and this building was actually made out of a technique called super adobe so it's these big long 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 sacks like uh, burlap sacks and we fill them with dirt that we just get from the mountain here and that's how we make the circular shape so you make that with the super adobe and then to make it more weatherproof we cover it with a concrete and lime plaster so that's one amazing way we've incorporated natural building and sustainability into our buildings here. Here we see our own garden. We've got this big, big, big turmeric right there. A big, big, big oregano right there. We've got some peppermint back there. Another lime tree. We've got another painting right there because, of course, we love art. Down there we have all of our old wood from things that we are rebuilding or taking apart and though that old wood is to be reused so we reuse everything here literally every single thing here we have some tomatoes squash dragon fruit a little relative of lavender it's not quite lavender but it's really pretty and you can actually use it in tea as well it's in the sage family the um, salvia over here we have our aloe and mint garden, another way that we use companion planting. We use the aloe for sunburns as well as to drink on an upset stomach. It's got these really beautiful flowers for our guests to look upon. This mint is a different kind of mint. We have three. I pointed out two other ones. This one we call apple mint. Mmm, tastes like an apple, <laughs> but minty. So it's more for tea. I don't really eat them. I was just doing that as an example. I would rather put it in tea. Coming up here, so we have this local Mayan artist called Silvio that gets rocks from the mountain and he carves them into amazing images. This is our mala beads, so we have a lot of yogis that come through here that chant their little mantras and this is all, um, it's called Job's Tear and it's made from a local grain so it's actually edible as well but it's most commonly used in art and jewelry let's walk up the path a little bit here here we see we have our moringa tree this is our oldest one planted again by stephen brooks himself we got a tree tomato that we got from atitlan organics we have this hibiscus right here that i got from I got the seeds from a farm, our, our brother farm in Costa Rica called Finca Morfo. Shout out to everyone there. It's an amazing place. I've learned most of what I know about permaculture through there. So I brought these seeds, smuggled them in directly from Costa Rica. Don't tell the feds. Um, here we have a bigger example of the chucamelons. So they're these amazing fruits that literally when they're ripe, they taste like juicy fruits. I'm so excited for you to come here and try one of those fruits. All along this wall, we have more macuna created little spots to go for them to go up. And we're actually going to be climbing them all the way up to the roof of our tea house. So let's just walk out of these gardens real quick. So 
walking up, we see a lot of this chaya. Again, this came from Costa Rica as well, and it literally grows. If I put this in the ground, it would grow a whole nother bush that would be this size in five years. I Usually, if I propagate it, I use bigger branches. But this is like, they call it Mayan spinach as well, Mayan tree spinach. And you can boil it for 10 minutes and then eat it. I love to make pesto with it. You can um, boil it up, blend it with some basil and some other spices and stuff, lemon juice, and make a delicious pesto. It's got all the same properties of spinach, but it's like spinach on steroids. So over here, I'm not going to go too deep into there. We have our tea house, again, built out of palms and sticks from the natural place. We do tea ceremonies. All of our meetings, like our staff meetings or any kind of talks or anything, happen in the tea house over some puer tea. And we use mostly imported teas for the tea house because it's a little more traditional um, ceremonial style. So let's walk up here and if you haven't noticed by now we have all of these retaining walls all of the entire path made out of rocks and these rocks are hyper local they literally come from up the mountain and they're brought down by our lovely local staff and even our volunteers help out sometimes so all of these rocks literally come from the mountain and we use them to create um, sustainable pathways and such so this is Abuela. This is our like biggest and our main building. Art everywhere as per you. Got this meditating Buddha. And so this is our main yoga shala. Just walk up these stairs real quick. So we see right here we have a big fruit tree right here growing. We actually used some stumps of a fallen tree to make that garden. See that thing that says Earth Tribe? That's made out of reused wood as well, and it's become a little planter. Got bananas. All those elephant ear looking things are another root vegetable called takiske. Let's walk up these stairs a little bit more. And so, here's our other two compost toilets. And then over there, where that open lid is, that's where we put our humanure when it's done. And this one down here is actually a two compartment system. So in the far side, there's fresh stuff straight up out of the humanure toilets. And you'd be actually be surprised. People get so, like we have volunteer parties where we like empty out the compost toilets and people are like, oh, we're gonna be shoveling shit. It's gonna be gross, it's gonna be nasty. But you'd be surprised. Everybody's like, oh my God, it's just like, Shoveling up regular dirt, can't smell a thing. And that's the beauty of humanure and why we use compost toilets is A, because we save our most precious resource in the entire world, water, and we use one of our most valuable nutrients, our poo, mix it with sawdust that we get for free from local um, wood shops that make uh, two by fours and, and the like, and then we put it in these containers. So the one on the far side is fresh stuff. We put a we write the date on the little roof, and then so that will sit for at least one year, and then the next one has already one year or more humanure in it. And so the way that it works is after one year, the humanure can be used on fruit trees, and after two years, the humanure can be used in our gardens. Up this hill. You've got more mountains. We just planted over a hundred coffee trees up there. We've got a climbing tree up there. Again, another cabin built out of sticks and boards. That's actually where I live. And then down here, I forgot to point it out as we walked up. You can just see those black little water tanks. And so how we get our water is we actually have a solar pump that pumps up all of our water from the lake and then it goes through a series of carbon filters and then it ends with a UV filter. And so all of our electricity here, if you didn't see it as we were down there, uh, comes from solar. So the sun catches the sun, or the panels catch the sun, bring it into what's called a charge controller. It converts it into 12 or 24 volts depending on the size of the battery and then it gets stored in the battery where it can be stored 
and then it goes into this inverter, which then can send out electricity for our lights and our blender and stuff like that. So that's one way that we've used catch and store energy, one of the permaculture principles. And we actually really incorporate all of the permaculture principles here at the Mystical Yoga Farm. So last thing I'll show you is our main yoga shala. This is Abuela, one of our three yoga shalas. You can see you're getting an exclusive sneak peek at this mural that is in process. We haven't even posted about it yet because we're waiting till it finishes. And then you see this amazing view, a singing bowl. So this is where we get all Shanti Shanti and Om and do some downward dogs and such. So we are a spiritual community and our three main aspects are mysticism, which is like earth prayer, fires, giving offerings, making prayers to the spirit of this land, so on and so forth, all things mystical. And then yoga, of course, it's in our name. So yoga we use to calm the mind, to create mindfulness, more awareness of ourselves and how we affect the world around us. And then permaculture, sustainability, and regeneration are also part of our key foundations. So our main goal here is to inspire the creative life force of all beings that come here and to be a living, breathing example of a new earth paradigm. So yes, we are a retreat center and we do hold space for massive transformation and empowerment on a spiritual level. And one thing that I see missing in a lot of spiritual communities, you know, the sound healings, the meditations, all of these things are very upper chakras, very up into the cosmos. And one thing we love to do here is to ground that, to bring it into the ground, to create a living, breathing relationship with nature, our surroundings, with this sacred land, and with our local community. So this is actually, so for those who don't know, I'm actually in the process, I've been coming since 2015 as the manager, I've been permaculture coordinator, spiritual space holder, facilitated retreats of all kinds, and now I'm actually renting the farm, I'm on a rent to own agreement, and this is why there's been so much transformation, and I'm going to really focus the emphasis more on regeneration permaculture, sustainability, while still maintaining our core foundation of spiritual transformation. And so the way that this ownership is going to work, I don't want to be the owner or the master of this community or anything because we are a community. It's actually going to be co-owned. So only a, a percentage of the ownership will be mine. Some of the ownership, I'm still working out the numbers and such, but some of the ownership will be reserved specifically for the local community, our local workers, so that they'll feel more invested. They're already family, they love working here, they think it's play, they play with us, they do yoga with us sometimes. So a percentage of our yearly profits and our ownership is going to be reserved specifically for the Mayan community. And one of my goals in the next five years is to actually procure the property next door and to create a basketball court, a communal wood shop, a place where they can grind up their corn for tortillas and have it a communal space where locals, even if they don't work here from the local village, can come and they can use our resources and also benefit from the abundance that we have coming here. So a part of the ownership will be mine through sweat equity and I'll be running it and managing it on all levels. Part of it will be reserved for locals, a percentage of it will be saved for sweat equity, people that want to continuously come here every year and put in their blood, sweat, and tears and their love into creating this community and expanding it and making it the magical thing that it already is. And then a percentage will also be reserved for investors. So if you're out there and you're looking to invest between 30 and 100K to not only help buy the farm, but to also support the mission and the project that we have here, then you can also earn a percentage of ownership through this way. Another form of investment opportunities that we have, we already have our first uh, member. So we have this membership program. Our first member actually 
funded all of our roof reparations and we're looking for more members and the next members will go towards the actual purchase of this farm and so it's essentially a fifteen thousand dollar buy-in and that gets you one month per year for the rest of your life here at the farm in our nicest cabin it will get you that includes all meals all yoga all workshops and activities that are happening happening um, really strong discounts on any kind of course that you'd like to participate as well as discounts on hosting a retreat so if you're a retreat facilitator and you're looking for a place to host retreats a this is your place and b consider being a member because you'll get really big discounts on hosting your retreat here and the reason the members aren't just investors there are people that want to be a part of our mission, our vision of what we have going on here so that we can share that out with the world because we want everyone who comes here to see what we're doing, to have their own spiritual transformation, and most importantly, see the lifestyle, the sustainable lifestyle that we're living and embodying and have the inspiration to go and implement some of these systems into their communities back home. So we've been, last thing I'll say before we wrap up is that we've been in a position with this pandemic that we don't have guests and we don't have a solid form of income. So our conscious business has been put on hold for a moment. And luckily we've received some really generous donations and have found some clever ways to bring in money from online to support our local staff and some of our ongoing repairs and projects. But if you feel like you love what we're doing here and you want to support that we're incorporating mysticism, yoga, spirituality, and most importantly, sustainability and the lifestyle and the embodiment of this new world, harmonizing humanity, if you would like to support us directly, definitely click the donation link that should be somewhere around this video and I'll have my PayPal there and that will go directly towards supporting our local staff and our ongoing projects. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm Ja Hendo. You can email info at Mystical Yoga Farm. Check out all of our social media sites as well as you can message me directly on Facebook Ja Hendo, J A H space H E N D O. I look so much forward to hearing from you. We have lots of free online offerings and some amazing other things. So definitely plan to come visit us and get super inspired like we are. Thank you so much. Aho, namaste, in Lakesh. Blessings to you, and may we all do our part in creating a better world.